Hello everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. Again, I'm kind of late for the day, but both Christine and I had to drive for dentist appointments and that took a little while and then some other things. And finally we're back, had some dinner, and now I'm ready to get this done with before I get on with the rest of my day. I'm a little sore. So if I'm talking a little gingerly, then that is why. So today we're going to read from 1 Corinthians 6. And I have a song for you that even though it's not morning, I think it's a song that we could sing any time of day. It's called In the Quiet of the Morning. And it was a beautiful thing. You know, I love getting up early because it is quiet. Generally, you do have things to yourself not a lot to bother you. It's a great time just to worship the Lord, just to ask for his leading for the day, and just to kind of set yourself straight. And it's a great time of the day. So this song talks about in the quiet of the morning. So hopefully you don't mind, even though it's the afternoon now. In the quiet of the morning, I will worship your name. through I may have done this song in our devotions previously but you know that's okay it's all right to do it again and get these words stuck in our hearts that's the wonderful thing about music and good lyrics is you can ponder over the words they were written underneath the inspiration of the Holy Ghost hopefully I'm not saying all are but the ones that we, uh, I would say, the one that we concentrate on, that they should, those should be written under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So I hope that that was a blessing to you, and that song is always a blessing to me. So we're going to read in 1 Corinthians 6 this morning, this afternoon, sorry. And if you want to follow along, I'm in King James, if you want to go word for word. But we just pray that the Lord would lead us, that the Lord would just strengthen our hearts and our minds and our resolve to obey. There's no other way but to trust and obey. And so, Father, speak to us through your word. Draw us closer unto yourself. Let the faith build in us so that there'll come a time when we can ask and we'll receive the things that we need from you. So, amen. 1 Corinthians 6. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to 
law with brother, and that before unbelievers. Now therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, you do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. And we, I'll just stop here. And we see the world running around wreaking havoc of our country and our culture um, by trotting underfoot these things that God has spoken about. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. If we would just stick with one man and one woman, married for life, ah, just think of all the problems that would be resolved. And waiting for marriage. I'll stick that in. But he, verse 17, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So there you have it. That's some wonderful words. We are not our own. We are God's. He has bought us with a price, with the precious blood of Jesus. And now we serve him. And what a wonderful way to live. What a wonderful way to walk with the Lord. So thank you so much for joining me today. I think I'm going to cut it here. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow morning perhaps bright and early, but you take care. Everyone, just take care and set your minds to follow the leading of the Lord in your life today. Amen.